I'm back again now for I guess this will be my fourth uh, taping digital taping and um, I'm using a camera on a tripod so I'm hoping that this will be a slightly better quality um, I'm going to try to speak up because I know that the speaker on the laptop was much closer I thought what I might do tonight is talk a little bit about how I am um, managing to get through all these doctor's appointments because you know once I found out then I had to consider first uh, my my well my doctor sent me to a dermatologist my dermatologist sent me to a plastic surgeon now the plastic surgeon is not the one who would typically um, be dealing with cancerous types of tissues like this tumor that I have but in this particular instance he would be uh, actually the person to kind of sew me up to mop up the the whole thing after everybody else was done so that means that I still need to have another person that I need to consult with which would be I guess they would call it an oncologist um, that's the surgeon who actually cuts the cancer out so um, so my list of doctors that I'm getting to meet and know is growing substantially as I <laughs> progress through this walk with my DFSP so now I've met um, well I haven't met the oncologist yet so I've actually went back and talked to my dermatologist who was the first one to give me the diagnosis of the cancer and I in my research I've been finding that I see a lot of talk about this Mohs micrographic surgery which I've spoken of in previous uh, tapings here and the Mohs micrographic surgery is, is tooted as being well this is the this is really the best way to get rid of any kind of cancerous tissue well it depends um, and you know don't take my you know what I'm going to say here don't take it as advice because it's not advice for you it's only advice for me in my particular instance um, this tumor because it's large enough it's not huge I think I've shown this to you before obviously it's not huge but it's about the size of a of a quarter here I guess at least maybe even a 50 cent piece and it goes into the surface below the skin probably I would say about hmm, maybe four or five centimeters so I'm gonna have quite a hole underneath my arm when this is all done now as I was saying uh, the Mohs micrographic surgery uh, because of the size of the tumor and because it goes so far below the surface of the skin um, we don't know this is in this is an addition to the knowledge that we know that it at least goes about five centimeters below the surface of the skin we don't know if it has roots which this is known to do typically they grow laterally or in other words sideways out like this but depending on how long they've been growing mine has been here for over 10 years and so depending on how long they've been growing they may have a, a substantial root system it's kind of like um, planting a tree on top of a um, of a you know some place where there's a lot of water like let's say a septic tank or something like that I mean these roots are going to dig down and try to get their nutrients that they need and it's the same thing with this it's going to be looking for blood vessels it's and you know blood it's going to be looking for uh, at the blood vessel itself it may be trying to attach itself to some bone tissue um, bone tissue uh, it may be trying to attach itself to um, to muscle or cartilage you just don't know what it's doing below the surface so I say all this because a Mohs micrographic surgeon will at least all the ones I've called I called three of them in my area and plus I consulted with my dermatologist on a second consultation by phone and all of the micrographic surgeons that operate with the Mohs technique all of them do it only in the office with a local anesthetic what that means is that if they're cutting with their technique and they get down below the mass the tumor itself and they're they're cutting through the 
the root and they they can cut down and they can keep on cutting down through the root but there comes a point in time where that uh, micrographic surgeon is going to say okay let's sew him up uh, let's patch him up the best we can and we're going to send him to the hospital we're going to send him to another surgeon because he will only go so deep once um, if let's say for example that they were to open me up and the surgeon were to find that the roots of this were to go deep down into bone or you know some other type of tissue or even into an organ for perhaps coming up around uh, into my lung or something um, now chances of that are slight but let's say that it happens we don't know how far the root has traveled and if that were to happen then I would have to go under general anesthesia there's no other way around it and so I guess I was kind of fooling myself thinking that this Mohs technique was the best way to look at things and that was because every time I looked on the internet uh, and I found the Mohs technique talked about in when it was talking about this DFSP, this dermatofibrosarcoma, getting pretty good at saying that, uh, protuberance, whenever it talked about it using this technique, it all, it's almost always said, you know, 99% of the time, there's no recurrence of the tumor if it's taken out with the Mohs technique. Well, I'm kind of thinking that, you know, that may be if it's a very small tumor. But if it gets to be a fairly large sized tumor, then I'm not so sure that they're able to make that claim. Um, unfortunately, because I'm not a doctor, I don't have access to all of these different studies that they've done, and so I can't tell you um, what the truth of the matter is. Myself, personally, I can tell you that I don't have the same confidence in the Mohs technique for my particular situation that I had in the past. So now I'm looking at uh, after I had the, my second discussion with my dermatologist, I'm thinking about maybe get, I'm definitely going to get a second opinion on the matter, um, but with a cancer specialist. So I've asked my dermatologist to introduce me to uh, a specialist in cancers that would be, I think, would be better able to advise me. That's one of the toughest things about going through this. No, I don't care what kind of cancer you have, I think it's all going to be the same. But the hardest part is to try to find out what is the best course of action that you can take 